there. Okay, so it's Friday um, and it's time for our yoga explore session. Um, we are on our mats uh, for a midday practice today. So um, those of you who've been following along will know that uh, we've been working on some sort of slower pace yoga to really stretch out the back because we're probably a little bit more sedentary than we would normally be, uh, being stuck in the house quite a lot. So today we're going to take some back openers on the floor first and then we're going to move through some line twists, some side angle stretches um, and also open up the shoulders. So we're going to start today seated. It's really good if you can pause the video at this point, grab yourself a belt or a scarf, a strap. Um, I'm also going to use two sofa cushions today. So grab yourself some sofa cushions um, and if you've got a blanket handy as well, uh, that would be ideal. So if you've got all those things handy, uh, ready to start, that would be great. We're definitely going to start with the strap. So to start with bringing ourselves into practice, we're going to sit ourselves down and we're going to lie down on the mat. So with our legs bent, uh, feet flat on the floor, carefully rolling ourselves down to the mat. Settling yourself here, lifting the head and stretching through the top of the head, lifting up each shoulder and stretching out and just settle here. You may want to adjust the pelvis as well, maybe bring the feet a bit closer, lift the bottom, lengthen the back and then level up the pelvis. Settling here for a moment, so just working out how you're feeling today, whether there's any tension, any worry, any load bearing anywhere. We're going to breathe into the belly Bring that breath all the way up to the top and then drop the belly and breathe out. So this is yogic breathing or three-stage breathing. Bringing the breath right in and breathing out. That funny growling is, you, is the dogs, if you can hear it, they're in the other room playing. Carefully then, we're going to lift our leg into our chest and just release off. If you prefer to, you can straighten out the other leg and just make sure that you're working carefully. You should feel a stretch around uh, the top of the hamstrings into the inner thigh and into the bottom. Swap the legs over carefully, placing the other foot on the floor and then bring the other knee in. Breathing here releasing the back, releasing the bottom, the knee in line with the body as best you can, breathing. Stretching that leg away if you prefer, and then releasing off, hugging both knees into the chest, moving around a little bit, stirring around. So you might want to explore the sort of outer edges of the back of the hips, gluteus medius, particularly a bit tricky in there. You might want to iron that out a little bit and then move around. Lovely. So carefully does it then, we're going to place our feet flat on the floor, we're going to stretch the arms wide, drop the legs over to one side and stretch the leg away. As we, if you want to, you can turn onto the left hand side completely and take a deep breath in, stretch up and lengthen. So you can see that my bottom leg is roughly as a right angle, the top leg is straight, and we're stretching and twisting away. So flexing both feet, keep breathing here, not too much tension at this point. Breathing in, you start to work the bandas in your ujjayi breath here. Straightening the top leg, turning the head back to the center, bring the legs up carefully, use your hands if you need to, and swap over to the other side. So bring yourself down onto the other side, bottom leg, right angle, top leg straight, right arm stretched out and then spin over to the other side and deep breathing here. Flex both feet, draw the energy up the legs into the bandas, breathing here. Turn the head back, straighten the leg, carefully bring the legs back up and hug the knees in. Sorry, lying on the pack makes it a little bit difficult. 
bring yourself up to seated. Now, if you want to use one of your cushions to prop yourself up a little bit, to take the weight out of the pose, out of the knees and the ankles, uh, that's absolutely fine. So you can pop yourself up a little bit higher and sit up. So find a seated position that works for you. Might be a standard cross-legged position, might be more of a Sukhasana where you've got your um, heels together, but the shins uh, a bit wider and a bit more parallel to the front of the mat. So I'd like you to grab your strap or your scarf, whatever you've got. We're going to take some shoulder openers. So I'm going to turn sideways for this to show you uh, the movement that we want. So uh, bring yourself into your seated position. Bring your belt into your right hand. doesn't matter if it's got a loop in it. And we're going to stretch our right arm up to the ceiling and lengthen. Stretching up here, dropping the belt down the back. Sweep round and start quite low with this one. Don't go too high. Stretching up, we're going to bend the top arm, reach the hand into a sensible position, pull the belt, lift the top elbow, stretch up through the top of the head, and then stretch the arm out to the side. If it's too easy, lower the hand down, move the hand up a little bit up the belt, and then stretch away. So you can get to the point where you feel the stretch. Keep breathing here. If you're trembling, it's too much. Carefully release that off. Swap the sides over. So it's like a modified Gomukhasana cow face arms. Bring the left arm high, bend at the elbow, sweep the right arm round. Start low to start with, lifting the elbow and lengthening the arm away. If that's too easy, bring the hand up and stretch up and lengthen. Keep breathing here, quite strong. So work carefully this early in the practice because we haven't done our shoulder warmers yet. And then carefully release off. You're going to bring the belt wide now. You can swap the sit position over to your less comfortable side. And we're going to bring the hands into a wide uh, belt position. So it might be, for instance, that it's uh, much wider than you normally would. And we want the arms to go all the way over to the back. So. Um, we want to avoid this distortion. So if you're too close, you get to a point where you have to sort of, ooh, manhandle yourself over. That is not what we want, okay? So we want the arms to be completely uh, as wide and as easy as possible. So deep breath in, drop the shoulders down the back, stretch up through the top of the head, band us in here, breathing in all the way back over. Keep nice and static through the torso, just the shoulders and the arms working, and then breathing out, bringing the arms back to the front. Keep a nice tension in the belt, and just keep oiling the shoulders, dropping down, bringing yourself up, rolling all the way over to the front. Keeping breathing down to the bottom, and breathing out. Couple more here just till you start to feel fatigue coming into the shoulders and the arms. You feel the lactic acid building in the muscles. So just getting to the point of fatigue, lovely. And then releasing off. Fantastic. Pop the belt out to the side. So we're going to carefully then bring ourselves into a straight legged position. So we're gonna stretch our legs out sitting up nice and tall. I'm going to take a very gentle twist here. So left hand to right knee, keeping the legs active, use the banders and gently just turn to the right, rolling the right shoulder open, popping the heart through to the front and stretching up through the top of the head. Try to avoid sticking the chin up, just tuck that chin in to elongate the back of the neck. Keep breathing here. Band us to support the lower back. Breathe in back to center when you're ready and breathe out to the other side, rolling the left shoulder open this time and opening up. Breathing here. Legs nice and active. Deep breath in, back to center. So bring the feet together 
and there's an option here if you want to to change this position from a standard Badokanasana bound cobbler's pose to actually grabbing one of your sofa cushions I've got my lovely oyster catchers here and I'm going to bring the feet on top so it just lifts the pose a little bit and gets a bit more deeply into the hips and changes the dynamics slightly of the pose maybe more towards the hip flexors so we're still going to be sort of reaching for the feet we're still looking at that nice straight back and it doesn't matter if the knees are high so we're going to just hold the feet together at the toes breathe in drop the shoulders down stretch up and then breathe out gentle guiding is allowed but actually yanking yourself over your toes is not part of the pose so carefully does it and stretch and lengthen stretch and lengthen don't worry about the knees just stretch and lengthen lengthening out of the lower back and you're getting to the point where you can settle in pose so it might be that you're low enough to bring the elbows in front of the shins and just sit here for a moment keeping breathing drawing the shoulders down and in settling and just breathing into the hips so with the amount of sitting maybe that we're doing and we're not only we're not maybe exercising maybe or walking around as much as we would if we were in, at work or um, in our normal sort of routine so we need to make sure that we're stretching the hips out and stretching out the lower back as much as we can keeping moving and mobile as best we can so deeping breathing bringing yourself back up put your hands underneath your knees and bring the knees together you can release the cushion back to the side now so now we're going to come up to kneeling so it might be that you want to use your cushion or maybe that's a little bit too much because uh, we've got a balance issue here we don't want to be like a pee on a drum so you might want to bring in your blanket now and pop it underneath your knees anything will do even an old towel so uh, you're going to bring yourself into your position where your knees above your um, sorry knees below your hips and your legs coming straight out into your standard table position um, for your cat cows so opening up um, the cat paws leveling up the wrists elbows and the shoulders the inner elbows looking at each other roll the shoulders back and down stretch through the top of the head suck the banders in keep breathing here just waking up the spine now starting to get some mobility drop the belly lift the tail draw the shoulder blades down the back and look up if it's comfortable on the neck breathing here slow cat cows today to just really focus on the muscular engagement and the stretch and then push down oh, reverse into the extension drop the shoulder heads widen the collarbone still push the floor away and drop the head really concentrating on the opening of the shoulder blades a bit like those doors uh, in stars in your eyes or is it a curtain i can never remember <laughs> breathe in flexing back Thing here widening the sit bones drawing the shoulder blades down the back a heart pops through to the front and breathing out pushing down sliding open the scapula lifting opening breathing here band is working a couple more times just moving through very slowly lifting flexing and breathing out pushing extending resting out here you may want a couple of goes at it you might want to go back and forth a little bit sitting back over the heels stretching out if it's too much in the kneeling position grab one of your cushions stick it on the lower legs and just open up uh, the knees a little bit if you bring the cushion behind the knee joints a little bit you'll feel that there's a nice stretch around those uh, uh, quads going into the knees and stretch back so you don't have to be 
uh, very low in this pose. You can stack yourself high using your cushions. You can stretch away and lengthen, but still fan open the shoulder blades and open the armpits to the floor. Breathing here, if you can drop the head down, drop the head down and rest. The main point of this pose is stretching the spine as much as we can. So really long back, as is the case in most yoga poses. What is my back doing? My back is lengthening is always the answer. Breathing here. Carefully does it then. We'll bring a little bit more activity into it now. So release the cushion if you were using one. Keep the blanket and bring yourself back up into that cow, uh, cat cow position. So stacking again, getting the confirmation and the alignment just right. So really opening up the hands, draw the shoulders down the back, stretch away. Band is working hard for this one now, going into striking tiger and a variation. So we're gonna stretch the left arm forward and push the left knee into the floor as you stretch the right leg away. Stretching and lengthening, draw the energy up the legs, back into the belly, back into the torso. Keep breathing here, dropping the right hip ever so slightly. And then we're gonna stretch out to the side and bring it back in. So if you can't see here, I'll just spin around. We're stretching through in our striking tiger and then we're opening out each limb to 45 degrees. Breathing out on the effort, breathing in back to center. Breathing out on the effort. Keep the head staring at the floor. Your drishti is the floor or the tip of the nose. Opening and holding. Relaxing down carefully, taking the swan stretch here briefly just to reset the hip if you need to. The movement of the leg particularly is really getting into the outer hip area. So work carefully if you're not used to this sort of work. Roll the shoulders back and down, stretch through the top of the head, drop the weight now into the right knee, stretch the right arm forward and then stretch out the left leg Keep breathing here, dropping the hips slightly to level up the pelvis to stop that pelvic flare. Draw the energy in and then breathing out, opening, breathing in back to center. Breathing out, opening, breathing in back to center. Keep staring at your drishti, keep drawing the bandas in to help with balance. It's harder than it looks this, keep breathing. Well done, hard work. Rest out if you need to, and then settle hand, knee, and settle yourself back into your swan stretch. If you need to go into the adapted swan stretch, feel free to bring in your cushion or two and stretch away and lengthen. If you prefer then, you can bring the hands in front, drop the forehead down, keeping the head and neck nice and long, or if you want to go into a more traditional balasana, tucking the chin in, tucking the head under, and bringing the hands behind. Resting here. In both those poses, you're really aiming to breathe into the back. So we're looking at this sort of three-dimensional breathing, which in current circumstances is a really useful thing to practice, particularly if you've ever heard of Buteyko breathing. So uh, yogic breathing, Buteyko breathing are very um, useful to increase lung capacity, increase the um, oxygen uptake, and uh, really helpful for uh, respiratory conditions. So carefully does it then. Bring yourself back up into your kneeling position. Free your cushion if you've still got it. And we're gonna bring ourselves carefully into the lunge. So I'm gonna turn sideways again now. So back up into the cat cow position, but this time we're gonna bring our right leg through. And it might be you have to push it forward, that's fine padding up that back knee and opening up into the Anjaneyasana lunge. So pressing both feet into the floor. You'll notice we haven't got to standing yet, taking our time today. So roll the shoulders back and down, pop the heart through, stretch up, start to open the space between the hip joints. Breathing here, top of the thighs particularly, tucking in the bandas. Breathing here. Relaxing here if this is enough, making sure that knee stays uh, vertical above the ankle or push up, breathe in if you want to test yourself today, opening up into the full pose. So stretching up, using that back foot as an anchor, draw the shoulders down 
and then scoop them up, open the heart to the ceiling, breathing here. Tucking in the bandas to support, they really are your 18 hour girdle. Breathing in and settling back down. Bring the knees back together. Brief swan stretch if you need to reset the hips and the back and then carefully does it onto the other side. So bringing the left leg through to the front, caterpillaring it forward if you need to, knee above the ankle, and then carefully settling yourself into position. So you feel the stretch, but not too much. So it's just starting to come on here, pressing through, tenting the hands, roll the shoulders, pop the heart through to the front as the shoulders drop down and in, and stretch up through the top of the head. Feel a bit like Usain Bolt, What's lovely is we have robins nesting in the garden. So there's a, a pair of robins who are flitting about the garden all the time. So they're really nice to look at. Just watching them move around, feeding their chicks, breathing here. If you want to push in and take it up to the extended pose, these big hip muscles take quite a while to open. So we're taking our time in this pose, lengthening the front of the body, drawing the banders in, drawing the shoulders down and in, breathing here, pushing into the back foot as well as the front foot to stabilize. Lovely, breathing here. And then carefully breathing in, releasing off, bringing the knees back together, settling yourself back if you need to, releasing off, very brief uh, swan stretch to reset the hips. Okay, one final pose on the floor here. You can have your blankets or your um, pillows, cushions handy to prop under your bottom if you need to. So we're gonna go into uh, deer pose. So deer pose, you might want to start with a prop underneath your left butt cheek. <clears throat> so we're gonna open one leg out to the side and open the other leg out in front. Okay, so we're sitting like this sitting up okay you might bring the heel into the bottom if you prefer and both legs out to the side a variation on deer pose you'll feel that it's quite a strong uh, stretch around one particular hip okay so it might be that you prefer to move your chalk over to the other side so I'm bunching up the blanket and just sticking it underneath my right butt cheek or if you feel that you could try and drop that down to the floor then just try and level up a little bit take a deep breath in going to turn to the right, roll the shoulder. You might want to grab behind the thigh, roll the shoulder open and twist. Keep breathing here. There's the robin again. <laughs> breathe back to center and breathe out, twisting to the easier side, so into the left hip. Breathing here. back to center and then finally stretching up up and away as soon as the butt cheeks start to lift from the floor and you get that anterior tilt of the pelvis this is where you stop so stretch up draw in breathe out and fold press the hands into the floor and lengthen keep drawing the energy up the right leg and dropping the right hip down towards the floor breathing in Releasing that off, if you need to, hug the knees into the chest in the middle to reset the hips. So this time, left leg out to the side. Okay, more in a sort of right angle. Right leg into the bottom. Okay, bringing it in. Chalk yourself if you need to. So one hip could be worse than the other. So you might wanna stick the cushion underneath the left butt cheek this time or the bunched up blanket stretching up nice and tall turning to the difficult side first so right hand behind left thigh sit up nice and tall roll the shoulder open and twist leveling up the pelvis as best you can keep breathing here flexing the uh, left foot breathing drawing the energy up into the hip breathe back to center Breathe out, twisting to the other side, the easier side. Again, keeping the weight in the left leg and the left bottom, butt cheek, left sit bone. Keep breathing here. Breathe in back to center and breathe out, lifting, lengthening and stretching. So again, not about getting to the floor here. It's about creating the length and the tilt in the pelvis that's um, optimum. So it's about stretching and lengthening, 
stretching and lengthening. Very active through the legs now, drawing the energy up the arms and the legs both. Breathing. And then release it off. Carefully does it then. Release your prop if you were using one. Stretch yourself onto your knees. Again, take a brief uh, swan stretch child pose in the middle here if you need to. And then we're going to carefully bring ourselves up to a down dog. So the dogs have been walking over my mat. <laughs> Open up the hands, bring the weight forward, roll the shoulders back and down and stretch through the top of the head. Strike out with the toes and push up into your down dog. You may want to take your adjustments. You may want to go a little bit wider through the shoulders. Roll the shoulders back and down, lengthen away, soft knees, high heels, and just concentrate on lengthening out of the back. So just working through what's talking back to you. So it might be the calves, might be the backs of the legs, the thighs, so into the hamstrings, it might be round into the bottom and the outer hips, and maybe then up through the SI joints, those knobbly bits at the back of the pelvis, all the way up the spine to the shoulders. So just work it through carefully. If you need to take your walking dog, take your walking dog, and then carefully look up if you need help transferring the weight through, drop to the knees and bring one leg forward and then bring the other leg forward or just stride through. Hands to the shins, roll the shoulders back and down, feet roughly hip distance apart. I'm going to stretch up and lengthen. So curl the tail under, breathing here so you can feel the muscles of the back activate. So Ardha Uttanasana, sucking in the pelvic floor and the tummy, your bandhas. And then breathing out, keeping everything soft, folding down. If you want to fold the arms, fold the arms. Just let everything hang. Let the head go heavy. Just keep pushing the floor away lightly and lifting the tail. But no need to straighten the legs unless you feel you'd like to. Keep breathing here, but careful not to lock out the knee. Relax the hands down. Bend the knee substantially. Push the floor away. Float yourself all the way back up. Stretch up, lengthen optional look up and breathe out lovely quick time check so 27 minutes in okay so halfway through so now into our adapted sun salutation so um, i used this version last night which is particularly designed for beginners if you prefer to take a normal sun salutation a Surya namaskara a that's fine that's entirely up to you so you can sort of skip through fast or slow your call i'm going to call out the sort of adapted version so i'm going to go to the side as well so i'm going to push my accoutrements out okay so coming to the front of the mat feet hip distance apart or closer deep breath in stretch up extended tadasana soften the knees breathe out fold knees soft Breathe in, extend, hands to shins. Ardha Uttanasana, like we just did, stretching away, activate the back. Breathe out, fold, place. Stride right, stride left to a down dog. So adjust yourself, roll the shoulders, push away, soft knees, high heels, and lengthen. So we're not looking for that perfect dog, we're looking for a soggy dog. Breathing here, deep breath in, look up stride or help that leg forward use the knees if you need to bring the legs forward extend Ardha Uttanasana hands to shins and breathe out fold this is designed to mobilize the muscles of the back as best we can push the floor away lift up lengthen and breathe out number two of the adapted deep breath in stretch up and breathe out soften and fold Knees bent, breathe in Ardha Uttanasana, stretching, lengthening, activate, and breathe out, fold. Left leg back, right leg back, into your soft dog. Knees bent, heels high. Make sure, though, you're not hanging out of the shoulders, so if you need to, move the weight forward, roll the shoulders back and down, push the heels of the hands into the floor, then the finger joints, and lengthen backwards, as if you're stretching your tail towards the area behind you. Breathing here, holding, rest pose, come down to your knees at any point if you need to, deep breath in, look up, bring that left leg through using the knees if you need to, stretch away length and Ardha Uttanasana 
and breathe out, fold. Breathe in, soften, push the floor away, take the energy up the legs, all the way out through the hands, expelliarmus, and breathe out. Let's take a variation now. So we're going to take that lunge again, but this time we're going to have uh, the knee high. So take a deep breath in, stretch up, breathe out, fold. Breathe in, hands to the shin, stretch away. Breathe out, fold, place. Striding right again, but this time staying in the lunge. Get the confirmation right, bend the knee, keep the heel high. Balance and stretch. If you want to stay low, stay low, but push the floor away and suck the energy into the banders. Or then take that energy further up into the belly and up and out of the arms. The arms can be wide. The higher the arms, the bigger the strain on the lower back. So work carefully and curl the tail under lightly to open up the right hip. Breathing here. Breathing out, lowering. Place, striding back into your down dog, softening the knees, high heels, roll the shoulders and lengthen. Breathing here, band is working. So this time it's right leg through to the front, use the knees if you need to. Stay high at the back but soften the knee, stacking that knee above the ankle at the front, get your proportions right. You're floating the hands and stretching away. If you want to stay here and lengthen, draw the energy up the legs, pushing the floor away, band is working. Take that energy up further if you want to come up, hips, hands out to the side or into a fuller pose, bringing yourself up, curling the hips and just opening up the left hip here, curling the tail under, breathing. Band is working here, quite strong. Work carefully and then breathe out all the way down. Place, fantastic. Striding back into your down dog. So softening the knees, taking a down dog after each lunge to reset the pelvis. Breathing here. Settling. If you want to start to lift the energy into the legs and stretch away into more of a standard down dog, that's fine too. Carefully, take a deep breath in. Stretch the left leg forward, the right leg forward. Ada Uttanasana, activate the back, stretch and lengthen. Push the floor away and breathe out, fold. Breathe in, push the floor away. Lift up, stretch up. Lovely, and breathe out. So final variation here then. We're going to take a sort of um, uh, Vashistasana uh, variation, sort of opening into the hip. So I'm going to keep the knee high or low. It's your call whether you keep the back knee high or low. You can have your cushion ready or your uh, blanket to pad up your knee. So take a deep breath in, stretch up and breathe out, fold. Ardha Uttanasana, breathe in and breathe out, fold. Place, striding uh, right here and carefully. We're going to bring the left hand inside the left leg. My knee is high, but if you prefer, you can pop the knee down to the floor. Your call. Push and lengthen through all the areas that are in contact with the mat. So foot, hand, foot. Push and lift and lengthen the spine. And so we're stretching through the top of the head and then carefully roll open the pelvis. If you want to spin the foot, you can and stretch up and lengthen. So more like a Utita Pasvakanasana. Stretching away, lengthening and carefully breathing out. Bring yourself back up onto the ball of the foot if you swiveled over. Carefully does it, step yourself back into your down dog. Soft knees, high heels, readjust your pose because those um, Pasvakanasanas can be quite long. Extend. Breathing here. Excellent. Striding the right leg forward this time. Staying up or going down, your call, as long as this uh, alignment at the front isn't compromised, bring the hand inside, push foot, hand and foot into the floor, lengthen and press up against the floor, stretch through the top of the head, roll open the hips, roll open the shoulders and stretch up. You can spin the foot if you want to and stretch up and lengthen. Knee down is fine as well for this one. Breathing here, stretching away, drawing and lengthening through the top of the head 
and carefully releasing it off. Hands down, spin up, swap the hands, stride back to your down dog. Take a rest if you need to, dropping to your knees, but this is your rest pose. So it's good to sort of acquaint yourself with it, opening up the toes and settling. Long back is what we're looking for. Deep breath in here, look forward. Bring the left leg through however best you can. Right leg through, Adho Uttanasana, stretching away, lengthening, and breathing out, folding. Soften, push the floor away quite deliberately. Draw the energy up, stretching up, and breathing out. Well done, everyone. So, we've done quite a lot of range of movement there already. We've worked into sort of the lower hips, sorry, hips and the lower back. Um, whilst on the floor, opening up the hips in various different directions, abducting external rotation of the hip as well. So carefully then into our sort of warm-up sessions, our Surya Namaskar variations, and now we're going to bring ourselves into our standing balances. So carefully up to you. If there's a standing balance that you prefer to do today, that's absolutely fine. It might be that walls, chairs, uh, even kitchen cabinets, uh, kitchen worktops, might be uh, in the right uh, frame of reference for you today. So it could be that you just pop your fingers onto something that will help you balance. So we can still do, you know, a balance here. We can still uh, externally rotate the hip and the knee, lifting the heel, pressing the feet into the floor and lifting the heart, drawing the energy down the back, curling the tail under lightly. This is still a standing balance. Your Vakasana, your tree pose. Keep breathing here. Lots of variations on the theme here. So if you're feeling quite warm and you're in a nice warm environment, there is the option to take it into the higher tree pose or the other um, Utita Hasta, uh, where you hold the, um, the toe. So more of the standard uh, pose. Or if you're very ambitious and you're happy that you can take a half lotus, you can bring the leg into the half lotus position and take the bind and stretch up. And then you've got the option to forward fold here. So if you're very careful, um, you need to keep this base knee soft. I find it's very easy to lock out the knee in this pose. So as you fold over, bend and push the floor away, lengthen, suck in the banders as you fold over. You can form the bind with the hand around the toe, lengthen and lift your Ardha Uttanasana here, Ardha Ardha Uttanasana, and then fold down. Listening to this knee all the while, and carefully bringing yourself out when you're ready. Okay, feet together, take it on the other side. If you're taking a nice relaxed tree pose, don't feel you need to hurry. Take your time, breathing. You can always pause the video at this point if you need to take longer. So basic tree, lifting the heel, still a tree, pushing both feet into the floor, external rotation, pushing and lifting, squaring off the hips as best you can, lifting the heart, drawing the shoulders back and down into your tree pose. Variations on the tree pose, bringing yourself up higher, got to find that little squidgy bit inside the inner thigh muscles, where you can kick the heel in and hold the pose, rolling the inner thighs out, dropping the tail just lightly under and lifting the heart and stretching up through the top of the head constantly adjusting and then carefully does it if you want to take the bound angle version carefully bringing yourself up into your half lotus holding the bind okay not working very well on this side today holding the bind taking the leg over bending the knee drawing yourself over I'm not going to do this side this knee's not very happy but generally go over uh, down to the floor softening that knee off pushing the floor away, draw the energy back up and release your half lotus. Standing then here in Tadasana, still a pose, feet together, toes open, lifting the arches of the feet, and pressing all the toes into the floor, almost gripping. Push the floor away, lengthen out of the knees, out of the pelvis, build the pose, draw the shoulders down the back, stretch up through the top of the head and holding here. Lovely, very nice. So 
side angle stretch here. We've taken our Pals of Arkanasana already as part of our sun salutation routine. So we're going to take our Trikonasana now. So I'm going to turn to the side. We're going to stride back with the right leg and go um, to a comfortable width. Okay, so with the back foot chopped, or if you want to, you can turn those toes in ever so lightly. Softening the knee, particularly if you see that knee caving in part away from the line that's drawn up from the second toe. So roll the inner thigh out and draw that line up from the second toe, up through the crest of the kneecap, up into uh, the iliac crest here, the hip bone. Draw the energy up and this pose is coming from the top of the thighs. Okay, So it's about swiveling the top of the thighs backwards. So take a deep breath in, up to you. If you don't want to have the hands high, you can bring the left hand, the back of the left hand inside the left leg and keep the right leg high. The main thing is just really rolling the shoulders open. Kick those thigh bones, top of thigh bones out behind you. Keep lengthening and opening the hips, opening the chest so everything sort of opens to the top and we stretch and slide down. Place the hand on the leg, as long as it's not pressing on the knee joint or directly over the ankle joint, that's fine. Stretching up, lengthening, opening, lengthening, or going down into the full pose, if you prefer. Keep lengthening, keep lifting, keep drawing the energy up the left leg. Find where you can be comfortable, aiming not to lock out the knee, but the legs are straightening and drawing the energy up into the pelvis. Soften that front knee, bring yourself back up, swivel around to the other side, Adjust your foot position, check the knee, it's going to be different on each side, because different levels of tightness in the hip and lower back. Drawing that line up the toe, lining up, drawing that energy up but not locking out the knee. Bringing the arms up if that suits you, or the arms low, stretching, lengthening, stacking, opening, kicking those tops of those thigh bones out behind you as you sliding down. Stretching up, up and away, resting on the shin, the ankle, or down to the floor, and lengthening away. Keep drawing the energy up the legs, pushing into the floor, lengthening away and breathing here. Stacking as best you can, so you're tucking that tushy in. Breathing here. Option to look up if it's comfortable. And then carefully soften that knee. Bring yourself back up. Sweep those feet together and jump the feet together and bring yourself back to the front of the mat. Carefully does it then. Everybody okay? Quick time check. 42, super. Okay, so then we're gonna go back down to the floor now and take some variations. So, option here to take an Utkatasana on the way down with an optional twist, or you can just take a sit down into your Dandasana straight away. So, if you're taking the Utkatasana, deep breath in, Option to draw the hands up and draw the shoulders down the back. Scoop those armpits forward as you sit down and draw the energy into the mid back. Breathing here. If it's too much on the lower back, bring the hands in to Namaste. Breathing here. The optional twist, roll and stretch. Keep the back nice and long, keep leveling up the knees. Don't go deep here, just take a nice gentle twist. Breathing in back to center. Reacquaint yourself with the center of the pose, level up the knees and carefully roll the left shoulder open, stretch and lengthen, drawing the energy in to the banders. Keep breathing here, breathe in back to center, breathe out fold, soft forward fold, breathe in Ardha Uttanasana, stretch away and carefully bring yourself down to seated. So you can go via your down dog and then jump through to seated or you can just sit yourself down carefully does it then. So we're back on the floor, didn't take long. <laughs> so we're going to pull the fleshy bits out, settle into our Dandasana. Legs straight, obviously if you've got uh, hypermobility in your joints it might be that you want to just stick something underneath your knees to just avoid that hyperextension of the knee joint downwards. Some people the more they activate the legs the more they tend to sort of banana the knees. So if that's you and you've got that tendency, then just make sure you're going to be safe. Stretch up, lengthen, use the energy in the legs, draw it up into the psoas, into the banders, and sit up nice and tall. Sitting here, you can place the hands at the side of uh, your hips. If that's um, not quite right for you and you've got shorter arms, you can also ball the fists and press the fists into the floor. So your call. 
roll the shoulders back and down and lift a little bit if you prefer. Keep the energy zipping up and down the legs, breathing here and just finding where you can be comfortable in this pose. Fantastic. Release it off, soften it off. So when release your chalk if you've got something underneath your knees, going into your Janu Shishasana. So we're going to bring in the right foot onto the left side or uh, inside of the left leg. So eventually the heel will tuck in the perineum. You may want to chalk uh, under your leg if you don't like the action of gravity on the hip joint, which is sort of the point of the pose. But if you just feel that that's really uncomfortable and taking you too far, then you might want to just stick one of your cushions underneath your knee. So there's a slight twist in this pose. Deep breath in, sit up, draw the energy up the leg. So there's a pulling in here and a pushing away there through the bent leg. And there's a slight then turn towards the straight leg, breathing in and breathing out lengthen. The temptation of us to grab our feet is overwhelming and that's not what we're looking for in this pose. We're looking to lengthen out of the lower back, keep the back nice and long, keep the band as active and stretch and lengthen. Yes, eventually we might get to the feet, but the main aim is to be as long and as flat as possible. Stretching away, softening this knee off and again if you've got that tendency you might want to just stick something underneath it if you'll just find you're pushing back too much through the knee joint. You look after these knees, they've got to last you a lifetime. Breathing in, bring yourself up, releasing off. We'll leave out B and C today. Hooray, I hear you say. Fleshy bits out, onto the other side. Bring yourself back on onto the other side. Again, listening to the knee, listening to the hip, checking in. You may have to make different adjustments on each side. Draw the energy up the right leg, sit up nice and tall and turn towards that leg. Breathe in, lengthen and breathe out. And again, if you're going to take that tendency, stretch away and lengthen. Again, aiming to lengthen out of the back, flatten the back and stretch yourself through as best you can without feeling the temptation that you've got to arch the back and hang off the toes. Because you can see what changes is the back then starts to arch. So we're looking to stretch and lengthen and keep the back as flat as we can. Breathing in, releasing off, release yourself, carefully does it. So we're going to open up to the side. Your call here, you can use your little chocked blanket. My blanket is very flat, um, so it's just a tiny little chock or the edge of your sofa cushion, just tucked underneath the coccyx to just tip the pelvis forward into an anterior tilt a little bit if you prefer. Okay, your call. Activating the legs as wide as you can manage. We're not looking for sort of Hanumanasana legs, but we're definitely looking to be uh, wider. Sitting up nice and tall. Going to turn to the left and push away with the right hand against the right leg. Toes sticking up. And I'm going to slide the right hand down as we tilt. So we're still facing left, but sliding right and going down towards the leg. Okay. So option here to bring the arm up and over for the full Darcy bustle, but it's your call. Keep sucking in the energy, energy zipping up and down the legs here. Breathing in, keep turning left as you're coming back up. And then when you're tall and center, bring yourself back to center. Left hand against right leg, sit up nice and tall, spinning away to this side now, sliding down and away. So turning to the right, Sliding away, up to you if you go all the way over into the Darcy. Keep stretching and lengthening. Activate those legs. Lovely. Keep turning right. You'll feel a deep stretch into the lower back, lower right quadrant of the back. Breathing in. Keep facing right as you come back up. And only when you're upright, spin back to centre. Hands underneath the knees. Bring them back in. Release your chalk. So then for this version now, we're going into a pigeon pose. Obviously, those of you who know that you can do your Ekaradha Kapotanasana and variations easily, then feel free to uh, not have a chalk or, you know, admit that maybe exploring these poses with um, some support would be interesting and it might throw up some interesting variations for you and also, you know, save your knees a little bit. So option here to have the sofa cushions ready. Okay. So, you know, have them handy. 
over to the left hand side, bring ourselves up to kneeling and we're going to bring our hands towards the front of the mat. We're going to bring our right knee to our right wrist and we're going to scooch this um, into, into the centre line. You might want to just bring that calf in a little bit as well. We're going to stretch and lengthen, stretch and lengthen. Sorry, I should have put the cushions on the right hand side. I'm not thinking straight today. Okay, so cushions on the right hand side. Carefully lengthen. We're trying to level off the pelvis here. So you won't necessarily go too low. And in all cases, we want to listen to the knee. So if there's any problem with the knee at all, we roll out onto the right butt cheek and come out. Okay, so to take the weight out of the pose, you can bring these two, three, four sofa cushions underneath your bottom, lengthen and lift just briefly, lengthening the front and the back of the body simultaneously, and then breathe out to forearms. So leveling up the pelvis, if you know you're happy in this pose, then feel free to take one of the cushions away and just settle yourself with one, okay, or two, settling, leveling up the pelvis, stretching away, drawing the energy up the legs. Imagine you've got a tray of very expensive drinks balanced on your pelvis and you've got to keep it nice and level. Option here to stretch away and go down to the floor if you feel happy. You look a bit like you've been mown down by a road roller. <laughs> keep breathing here. Don't feel obligated though, it's a long way down and a long way back up and it's a strong pose. Release your chop carefully and roll out to the side to release the pose. Bring yourself back up to kneeling, swap your chocks over to the other side, the, <laughs> the left side now. Hard to tell with this mirror image as well that we have in the video, so um, just work usually with the right hand side first. Left leg coming forward, left knee to left wrist, hands towards the front of the mat, scooch that um, calf out of the way, and then caterpillar the right leg backwards, carefully lowering yourself onto your prepared chalk. Okay, lengthen and lift, lengthen the front and the back of the body, lengthening up, 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 and then breathing out, lowering to forearms, leveling up. If you're feeling comfy here and there's no pain in the knee, then you can release yourself a bit lower, but work carefully and listening to the body. If you've got nice feathery cushions, you can always sort of bunch them up and stick them underneath your, um, your sit bone a little bit more, stretching away. If you feel nice and level and quite happy in this pose, then you can stretch the arms away. Keep nice and level, that tray of drinks. Lovely, keep drawing the energy up the legs, leveling off the pelvis, banders in. Breathing here. and then carefully does it. Feel free to stay longer in these poses if you prefer and you're feeling the benefit. And then when you're ready, you can release your chalk, roll onto that left butt cheek and release yourself off. Bring your cushions back out to the side, have your blanket handy. Quick time check here, lovely. Just into the last sort of eight minutes of the class now. So bring yourself down into seated. Okay, so going to bring ourselves into that um, soft forward fold, so back into the Sukhasana. So it might be this time that we try to get, having opened up the hips, this might be easier for you. Okay, have the legs further away and sit on a cushion if you feel you need to give yourself a little bit of height to take the weight out of the knees or the hips. So the shins level with the front of the mat, feet slightly wider here. Okay, so the feet come out to the side and the feet flex. Okay, the aim in Sukhasana frequently, you'll see lots of yoga teachers sort of pushing, lengthening, setting those knees down. The same pose that we did in the end of last night's class, which I had to film separately. So in the Sukhasana variation. So we're going to actually bring one hand underneath uh, and the other hand underneath. So I'm going to lift the knees and bring them up, bring the arms underneath and we're going to bring ourselves up, lengthen, out of the lower back, 
the knees go into the crook of the elbows as we sort of push the knees against the arms, but the, the arms resist. So pressing the hands into the floor, the arms resist, and we use that length, uh, that tension to suck in the banders and lengthen out of the lower back. And you start to feel the similar compression in the back that we felt in our Ardha Uttanasana with our hands to our shins that we were doing earlier. So similar feeling in the back here, lengthening out and away, leveling up the neck, and then if you feel good, you can hinge lower, push and pull with the arms and stretch away. And again, finding where you can settle in this pose. Yes, your arms are in the way, okay? And there's a point to that. Keep breathing. Bring yourself out carefully. I'm gonna swap the legs over and do it on the less favorite side. So feet out to the side. Shins level with the front of the mat. It feels unnatural, feels tight in the upper hips, you know, the in, in top of the thighs into the outer hips. We frequently hold a lot of tension here um, because of, you know, sitting in squishy sofas, sitting in office chairs, sitting, 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 driving, not doing a lot of that at the moment, but carefully does it. So settle yourself out with the wider feet, lift the knees up, bring the hands through, Keep the knees high as you stretch and lift and bring that feeling on into the back and push and pull with the hands. So there's a push and a lift and a lengthen and then a push and a lift and a push down of the knees. So there's sort of a bit of tension here as you find the pose and hold and then if you feel good and everything's working nicely, you can lower yourself down a little bit more and stretch more deeply into those outer hips. Okay, carefully does it. Moving towards Shavasana now, you'll be pleased to know. You would choose, we're using this as our sort of yoga mudrasana today. So carefully does it, breathing in. Release off that pose, oh, release the legs. If you need to do a bit of fingertip first aid, my facial release with the fingers, then you can sort of knead bread as if you were sort of, you know, if you're doing um, uh, crumble where you're sort of, you know, you're, you're really sort of massaging the mix. You can sort of massage into your outer hips here and just free off a little bit of tension. Okay, so then carefully bringing ourselves down to Shavasana. So your call to, uh, today, if you found that you've really got into those hips and lower back and you felt the benefit of the, the practice today after maybe being a bit sedentary this week, then carefully does it, relax yourself down and it might be better to have your knees bent in your Shavasana. Otherwise, if you're very happy and you'd like to, you can open up the legs. Variation here, thankfully we've got the pillows here. So if you want to do another variation, this is really nice and very relaxing. Place both cushions nicely in line, okay? The bottom is gonna be off the cushion and you're gonna arrange yourself in Shavasana over the cushions. So legs bent or legs wide, it doesn't matter. Roll yourself down, lift up the arms and open up. If that's too much with the arms up and over the head, just bring them out to the sides or floating away from the side of the body. <sighs> Practice is over now, so settle yourself down. The supported Shavasana is very pleasing. It creates a slight sort of curve and an openness in the back. So we're getting a slight uh, lift and open, slight change in the practice here. <sighs> Three deep sighing breaths. Three stage breathing in and then push the breath out very deliberately. You can make it as noisy as you like in your own space. And then as the breath settles into a non-forced, very just relaxed and easy flow, we're just checking in with all the areas of the body. Maybe we're holding tension in the knees, the ankles, oh, the hips most likely tense the buttocks and release and then just settle soften the belly widen the chest let the limbs go heavy breathing here and settling <sighs> tuning into your body into your breath and how you're feeling today And this mindful relaxation, watching the responses of the body, 
noticing if the mind becomes distracted, recognizing when we feel that the thoughts have started to carry us away, catching on to the kite string and just drawing the energy, drawing the focus back into the body. Breathing here. Some thoughts on inspiration. Inspiration is disturbing. She does not believe in guarantees or insurance or strict schedules. She is not interested in how well you write your proposals, what you do for a living, or why you're too busy to see her. She will be there when you need her, but you have to take it on trust. Surrender. She knows when you need her better than you do. Inspiration. So if you're not worried about the passing of time and you've got time to spend in your Shavasana, stay here um, for as long as you like. If you are feeling that you need to get on with something else, then we're coming to the top of the hour now. So bring your awareness back to the sounds you can hear in the room. How your skin feels against the air and your body against the floor. Very gently move your limbs, take your stretch up into the long dog stretch, force or catch a yawn, and carefully and slowly either move onto your side to bring yourself up to seated or bring yourself up to a comfortable cross-legged position. For those of you who are interested, these are the Koshi um, Jura wood. Um, chimes that are made in very different uh, places. Um, they've got some really lovely variations on the theme. They all sound beautiful. Um, different themes to do with earth, fire, water, etc. Um, and they're based in the Jura Mountains in France, so they're the Koshi wind chimes. Take a deep breath in, sweep the arms high, place the hands together, breathe out, thank you, and namaste. See you soon. Have a lovely weekend.